When lightning flashes, it casts a shadow. My name means shadow. With my blade, I purged all obstacles to progress. And yet, something was lost with each step forward. In the end, I even lost her. The tales are still retold in the shade of every Thunder Sakura. But the wounds left on our nation by that terrible loss still ache. Never stop searching, even if only for a brief flash of light. If nothing else, we have the present moment. She said that once. But I've seen the nation strike forward and lose everything to the heavenly principles. Perhaps only if time stands still will the lightning's glow never fade. The present moment is a fragile illusion. Only eternity can bring us closer to the heavenly principles. I am no longer the shadow. Mine is the most supreme and noble form. Let power over the realm be vested within me. In this form shall I honor my subject's dream for a land of eternity, unchanging forevermore. <sighs> I've come here to clean the book warehouse plenty of times before, but this is the first time I've run into these crooks. Are you all right? I am, thanks to all of you. Hey, wait a minute. You're the traveler, aren't you? And you're with... Uh, Lady Kutching. An honor. Truly an honor. We'll try not to take up too much of your time. I understand that this book warehouse is the property of the Feiyun Commerce Guild. Could you advise whether we might find any text relating to the Stove God in this collection? Um, the Stove God? Uh... I heard that's the Lord of Geo, right? Huh? Really? Yeah. A friend of mine who conducts research mentioned it once before. We use stoves for cooking, and stoves are built from rock. Some people think that the stove is a gift from the Lord of Geo. And that's why they call him the Stove God. Seems logical enough. But do you have any books on the topic? Um, I, uh... I I'm sorry, I'd have to ask the young master about that. Any questions? Please, ask away. Hey, it's Cheng Yun and Xin Chou. Hello, one and all. Hey guys, what are you doing here? I was bored with nothing to do, and thought I'd come out this way for a bit of reading. And then I thought, why not bring Chung Yun along too? <laughs> yes. I'm just along for the ride, really. I see the Yuhang Kuching is with you. Hmm. Whatever brings you here must surely be a matter of grave importance. Master Xingqiu, if I may be so bold. Do you happen to know if there are any texts on the subject of the Stove God among this collection? Since I personally selected which volumes to store here, I do have some recollection of their contents. If my memory betrays me not, there is one volume among them called Demystifying the Legends of Liyue, which mentions the Stove God. Might I take a look? Certainly. If it pleases my lady, I shall lead the way. Sheng. I will take care of things here. You're free to go about your own business. They're back! So did you find it? Yes, Master Xingqiu has quite an exceptional memory. Demystifying the Legends of Liyue does indeed mention the Stove God. However, it says the following. <clears throat> the body of the dragon wielded a tail that could eclipse the sun and claws to command fire and teach the ways of wisdom, 
receiving the gift bequeathed unto them, humankind cooked food with fire, and thus did they prosper. The body of a dragon? The stories about Rex Lapis say the same thing. That much is true, but this is the only passage in the whole book. If we want to find out more, we'll have to continue our investigation. There's nothing further to discover here. It seems we'll have to look at other options. I come from a long lineage of exorcists, and our family too has amassed a number of ancient texts. Now that you mention the stove god, I seem to recall reading somewhere that this god once appeared at the Gwaley Assembly. Of course, I can't say if it's true or not. Books are penned by people. All they can do is show what the author was thinking. Everyone's mind is different, so every book on a given topic will give a different account. I apologize that we could not help in a more substantial capacity. Your help thus far is quite ample. Liwe is a vast and rich land. All things that existed here in the past have left their trace. So long as we do not abandon our search, it is sure to bear fruit eventually. Thank you all. We will continue our investigation elsewhere. Uh, hold up! I had a question too. Xinchu, Chongyun, could you tell me what kind of food you like? Food? Oh no. Y you're not thinking of taking part in the Masterful Chefs, are you? Uh, yeah, I totally am. What's wrong? You look like you've just seen a ghost. Shangling, this is a major event. I beg you, please don't cook anything strange for this competition. What do you mean, strange? <laughs> Mushroom slime stew, to give one example. Okay, fair enough. That dish isn't my most popular. But that's why I'm doing all this research, so I can create some really special dishes to win everyone over. Well, in that case, I like cold food. That's because you can't handle hot and spicy, right? <laughs> yes, you're absolutely right. My tastes are on the mild side. I prefer gentle dishes with minimal seasoning. Soups and stews, vegetables and broth, seafood or freshwater fish, either boiled or steamed. These kinds of dishes I am most partial to. No surprises from the Gugu Geek. Okay, another mild child. Got it. These are just personal preferences, and everyone's are quite different. Are you sure this eclectic mix of opinions will be of any use? Of course! You're my customers, and putting a smile on customers' faces is my calling as a chef. Though Xiangling's market research blade stabs often into the dark, her heart never strays from the noble path. If anyone can win the hearts and minds with their cooking, it's gotta be someone like Xiangling. She's got pure intentions and really cares about the customers. No, where's all this praise coming from? Knock it off, guys. You're embarrassing me. Uh, sorry for holding you all up. That's all I needed to know. Shall we carry on with the investigation now? Over to you, Kuching. Where to next? Hmm. So we've learned the stove god allegedly made an appearance at the Gwaley Assembly. But today that place is largely a wasteland with few traces of human activity. Long Shu Inn is close by, so let's stop off there on the way over and see what we can find out. Forgive us, for this is where we must part ways. May your journey be a smooth one. Yes, best of luck. If you run into any difficulties, come and find us. We'll be only too glad to help. Let's go! Next stop, Wang Shu Inn! Huh? Oh, Traveler! Who are all these people? Friends of ours! Allow Paimon to introduce Xiangling, Guoba, and Kuching! Kuching? Of the Chishing? She's the, um, the, um... Hi. It's not that. It's... I mean, I'm just your typical commoner. I've never met someone as high up as the Yuhang before in my whole life. Look at that strong body, those powerful hands, and honest eyes. This guy must be a really great chef. So, is there something I can help you with? You've come a long way out to end up at Wangshu Inn. Let me fill you in. Ah, okay. I see. 
Legends claim that the Stove God once appeared at the Guili Assembly. As Wang Xuan is the oldest extant building in this area, any historical texts from around these parts are likely to have ended up here. Is there a room in this inn for storing books? And if there is, do any of them mention the Stove God? Well, now that you mention it, we do have a fair few ancient texts here. I remember looking through an old recipe book once. I just need to remember where they're all stored. If you're happy to wait here for a few minutes, I'll go have a look right away. Oh, uh, Traveler, there's something I need to discuss with you. What is it? We need to pay up or something? What? No, I wouldn't take your money. We're all friends here. I just wanted to ask if you had the time to make a satisfying salad for me. A satisfying salad? What for? Yeah, guy who hangs out on the roof terrace, you know? Good-looking fella, not too tall. Shh! Don't you think he can hear you? Oh, right. Uh, yeah, maybe. Anyway, you know who I mean. The boss told me to take care of him, but this guy... Let me tell you, he is one tough nut to crack. He usually turns his nose up at everything that isn't almond tofu. But the boss tells me you once made him a satisfying salad, and it all went down so well. So, I was thinking... Could you teach me how to make it, too? That way, I'll have something else in my arsenal. Oh, so this is for show! You guys really look after him, huh? Well, that's life, right? You gotta look out for your own people. All right, then. Wait right here. I'll be just one minute. Clock is ticking! 59, 58... Sorry for the trouble, Traveler. Okay. Here you are. Thank you ever so much. While Kuching's reading her book, let's make that satisfying salad. Xiangling, what are you gonna do? Oh, I'd love to come watch too, but I don't want to get in the way, so I'll just stay here with Kuching. Okay, shall we go then? Go ahead and get started. I'll just watch from over here. I only need to watch you make it once to have it committed to memory. That should do it! Alright, thanks for that. I think I've got it now. You got all the steps down, right? Of course. Don't forget, I am the best chef around these parts. Let's go see what Kuching and Xiangling are up to. Kuching! Xiangling! We're back! You finished cooking? Good timing. We finished our reading, too. And? Useful? Or no? Useful. There is a passage concerning the Stove God, and it's not what we were expecting. I quote, <clears throat> 60 miles to the northwest is the Guili Assembly. Many were settled there, where they hunted in groups, farmed the land, and made their living from what the soil yielded. When the stove god descended, one god became many, all of which were the height of children. As does a star when it descends into the world, so the stove god went out among the common folk and taught them to create fire. With fire, the people at last learned to make hot food, and they dined on rice kanji and cooked meat thereafter. This is a radically different account from the one given in demystifying the legends of Liyue, and also a conflicting one. One god became many? Hmm. Does that mean there was more than one stove god? Taking the text at face value, that is what it says. Went out among the common folk and taught them to create fire. So did the stove god really go and teach people how to cook firsthand? <laughs> now that's a god who truly cared for their people. So we've got two leads, but they contradict each other. How do we know which one to believe? By continuing our investigation and reserving judgment for now. Thank you for this text, Yan Xiao. It's my pleasure, really. Think nothing of it. If anything, I should be thanking the Traveler. Listen, you've helped me an awful lot. Not just today, but in the past, too. I want to make it up to you properly, and as it happens, things are pretty quiet here today. So I'd like to take the chance to treat you all. What do you say? Will you stay for a meal? Wow, he sure sounds confident in his cooking. I 
nothing like that. Confidence is one of the best ingredients a chef can have. I really want to try his cooking. I say we take him up on his offer. It's hard to refuse a generous offer like that. Yes, I think we can fit this in. Yan Xiao, we await your culinary creations with great anticipation. <laughs> I won't disappoint. Everybody, please be seated! You think you own the place? I'll sit here with Gula. No, no, no. No, no. Here we are. That's everything you ordered. I never would have guessed that such a gifted chef worked here. The Sen isn't particularly known for its food. Everyone likes a good meal, whether they're staying the night or just stopping by for a bite. We call it an inn, but the fact is it's much more than that. We have to cater to all aspects of daily life to make this a true home away from home. <sighs> Please enjoy your meal at your leisure. I should get back to work now. Yan Xiao, are you taking part in this year's Masterful Chefs? Uh, huh? Y you too? Yep, I've signed up already, and I've got my eyes on the prize. <laughs> Your cooking's delicious, Yan Xiao. I'm really looking forward to seeing you in the final. Huh, interesting. All right, I'll see you there. What was that? Some kind of power move? No, it seemed more sportsmanlike than that. Yep, he's a really talented chef. His food was excellent, and it showed he has a level-headed personality. That's the kind of chef that could be a match for me. I haven't had any competitive cooking experience since my cook-off with Brooke in Springvale. <laughs> You're too kind. Uh, Guoba, what are you doing? No. Uh, Guoba's eating the... Those were kitchens! How could you steal them while she wasn't looking? Oh, my golden shrimp balls. Huh? You ate every last one? Oh, Quoba, we've been through this. When we're with friends, you gotta be on your best behavior, okay? I'm so sorry, Kuching. I promise I'll make it up to you. It's a big deal. We can just get another plate. After all, it's Yan Chao's treat today. It's not the same, though. The moment's gone. Sure, you can eat something else, but you can never go back and change the feeling of despair as your food is snatched away from right under your nose. The dining experience is a trinity of emotion, food, and atmosphere, and you've got to have all three to make it work. <sighs> I have to say, now that you mention it, that is a very accurate appraisal of the situation. I'm gonna make it up to you, Kaching. Is there anything you want to eat? Anything at all. Whatever it is, I'll make it for you. Hmm. I don't have high hopes for this. But equally, I don't want her feeling guilty. <sighs> okay, I'll let her do this for me. If you insist, there is one dish that perhaps you could try making for me. It's an old recipe from my grandfather's notes. No problem. May I see it? I'll get it to you when we're back in Liwa Harbor. Traveler, have you finished eating? Before we do anything else, let's head back to Liwa Harbor. I need to fetch something. Need to get something. I need to go home to fetch my grandfather's notes. Let's meet at Wanmin Restaurant later. Great! I'll go get everything ready. Traveler, what about you? Are you gonna do your own thing for a while, or do you want to come in and have a seat? I uh, actually have something to discuss with him. You go ahead. We'll join you later. Okay, gotcha. Traveler, come here for a moment. I need your advice on something. What do I need to do to get along with Xiongling? Seriously? That's what's stressing you out? 
What's so strange about it? Why are you looking at me like that? You're super smart, and you're always so sure of yourself. Paimon thought you'd never need advice from anyone about anything. Well, that's just ridiculous. Xiongling's always so warm and friendly with me. This time especially. And now she's desperate to do me a favor. So, is that supposed to mean... We're friends already? I'm just not used to dealing with people who are so warm right from the get-go. How exactly am I supposed to respond to that? Oh. Um. Okay. <clears throat> Noted. Thank you, Traveler. I'll see you again shortly. Huh. What's making Kuching so self-conscious? Paimon thought nobody would be able to get under her skin. 